Let's take a look at how we can use Excel to see how much money you'll have when you retire. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the data table to actually create a bunch of different scenarios so that we can see under different conditions how much your savings will add up to. So suppose you're saving $500 a month, the annual rate is 5%, and you're saving for 35 years. So we can just use the future value function here to calculate how much you'll have at the end of 35 years when you save the money. So we're going to start by putting in the rate and we want that to be a monthly rate so we're going to divide that by 12. The number of periods 35 and again this is monthly so we're going to multiply that by 12 and then how much you're saving. So we're going to assume that you're saving 500 a month. We're going to put that in as a negative number because that's a cash outflow. And let's see what we have here. And there are a couple other um, arguments you can put into the FV function. For example, PV, we don't have any. If we had some amount of money that you started with in your account, we could put that in. And type would be, one would be beginning of year cash flows and type 2 or type 0 if you leave it blank is end of period cash flows or what we refer to as an ordinary annuity. That's usually what we do so we're going to assume you start saving one month from today. And so if this is what you do, you save $500 a month at a rate of 5% for 35 years, how much will you have? You'll have uh, $568,046 uh, 40, and a little bit of change. Now, of course, we can change these numbers and say, well, gee, what if we earn 6%? You know, how much would you have? Right, we can go back to the 5%. We can say, well, what if I saved $600 a month? How much would I have? Et cetera, et cetera. So you can do that, but wouldn't it be nice to have a table that showed you how much money you would have for based on the rate for example, and the number of years that you save. So let's, um, let's create a table here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, different rates right here. And let's start with oh, 3%. And then we'll go up by um, half a percent. And we'll cover a few years, or I'm sorry, a few different rates. Let's say we'll go up to well, oh, 12 percent for argument's sake. Let me just reformat that and put that a couple decimal places. And up here, let's look at different years that you'll be saving. So let's say 25. Now well, let's start with with actually 20, and then 25. And so you'll see how much money you have based on how many years you save. And we'll copy that over and let's say we'll go to oh, we'll go to 45. Whoops, don't want to go that many years. We'll go to 45 years. So what we can do is we can actually use the data table to do this calculation, to fill this in for us so we know how much money you'll have at 3% for 20 years, how much you'll have at 7.5% for 30 years. So what we need to do is we need to put this value in here. So I'm going to put an equal sign and I'm going to highlight that cell. And I'm going to highlight this entire table here. And I guess I only went to 12 percent. That's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to data, what if, and data table. Now I've used this before for a Monte Carlo simulation, but here maybe you want something a little simpler. In a Monte Carlo simulation, you assume, for example, your rate of return is 5% with a standard deviation of 3%. Here maybe we'd just like to know how much we'll have under different circumstances. So the row input here for years is going to be right here and the column input going down is going to be 
here. And I'm just going to hit OK, and it's filled my table. This is quite nice. Let me, let me just reformat this here. A little bit easier to read if we have some uh, formatting. So I'm going to go to dollar sign, and we don't really need the pennies. So let's see what we have here. So you can see this range of values we have depending on depending on the rate you earn and the number of years you save for. So at 3%, if you only work for 20 years, you'll have about 164,000. If you work for 45, you'll have 570,000. If you can earn a little better return, like 9% and you work for let's say 45 years you're gonna have 3.7 million dollars so this is this is rather nice this fills in this entire table for us and gives us different different scenarios right so we, maybe we're making a decision how many years to work right and how aggressive we'll be in our investments so we'll have, if we're a little more aggressive, we'll have higher rates of return or expect higher rates of return. If we're more conservative, you can see we're not going to have as much money, even if we work for a lot of years. So you can see that, let's say, if you're a little more aggressive and able to earn 10% as opposed to 3%, you're going to be better off in 25, 25 years than you are working 45 years here. What you can also do here is you could change the amount you save. So under these same assumptions, what if we said we save $750 a month? Again, you can see that it changes how much money we have in here. So this is rather nice. We could have also done this table instead of with interest rate here and number of um, years here. We could have done it with, let's say, the amount you saved and the amount of years that you work, right? Maybe that's better in some senses in that uh, those are choice variables, how many years you work and how much you save is a choice you make where the rate is going to be determined by the market. It's partially determined by the individual in terms of um, you know, how aggressive you're going to be. If you're going to invest in you know, certificates of deposit and treasury bills, you're gonna be on the lower end if you're going to invest in stocks, you're going to probably be on the higher end in terms of earnings, or at least maybe not 11.5%, but maybe 8 or 7.5%, which is pretty significant. right? If you can earn, for example, 7.5%, and you work for 40 years, you'll have 2.2 million. If you only earn, let's say, 5%, even if you work for another five years, you're still going to have quite a lot less money. So this is actually a nice way to do it. The table is done quite easily for you by taking advantage of this. Again, go to the data tab, what if analysis, and data table. All right. So this is a great application of this. It allows you to see um, different different scenarios in terms of the rate you're earning and the number of years you're working.